Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Bruce, I'm a physician. I'm currently nine years out of med school, so I've done a four year residency and now I'm in my fifth year as an attending physician. After medical school, I matched into a four year categorical emergency medicine residency. I left after the first year and I switched. I won't tell you what I switched into yet. I thought this could be very helpful for other medical students, physician assistants, and nurse practitioners who are trying to decide what to go into, maybe contemplating emergency medicine, maybe contemplating other areas of medicine, but really having a hard time trying to figure it out. For me, it was also really hard too. There's really not that much to go off of. You can shadow or do rotations, but it's really hard to imagine yourself as that person for the rest of your life. I wanna first talk about emergency medicine as a career path. And I want to distinguish between emergency medicine as a career path versus the people who work in emergency medicine. Because I actually like the people who work in emergency medicine a lot. They're what drew me into emergency medicine in the first place. I think they're really cool, hardworking, down to earth people who I got along with really well. And actually some of my best friends are in emergency medicine. Jason, Mark, hey, what's up? And I just enjoyed the heck out of the people who worked in emergency medicine. But I wanted to tell this story of my own story of my initial impressions of emergency medicine and how they evolved over that first year as an intern. So what drew me to emergency medicine in the first place? Well, as a med student, I thought it was so much fun. I loved the ER. I've always wanted to be an ER physician since I was a young kid. In the ER, you have very clear cut answers, clear diagnoses most of the time. At least you have algorithms for working up a particular patient with a particular diagnosis versus in a different career path, the career path I'm in, it's probably the exact opposite of that. And that could be a little bit more frustrating here and there. What I liked about the ER number two is that there's amazing teamwork. You can get very close to your colleagues there. You spend an eight hour shift, you get in lunch, you get in dinner together. Sometimes you're getting a midnight snack together. There's a sense of camaraderie, this bond that everyone has in the ER among the, the physicians, the nurses, the techs, the other staff, the receptionists. It's like all one big team. It's so cool to see it all work together as a unit to help people through the ER. And like I mentioned, people are so down to earth and nice in the ER despite the stress. They're really straightforward. People had a job and they wanted to get the job done. There's no time for drama. You're either going to see patients and work them up and treat them and write the note, or you're not. Point number three that I liked about the ER, which kind of tapers off of point number two, is that you're so busy that shifts go by very quickly. And it's fun, you get to do procedures and work with your hands and suture people and staple their head together and do all sorts of stuff if you don't mind that aspect of medicine. It's actually very, very cool. You get to do some procedures where in a pinch, you wouldn't have ever otherwise expected yourself to do those. Now, why I left the ER? I'll own it, my own anxiety. It was a lot of stress, a lot of high acuity. Oh my gosh, the level of anxiety that I had walking through the door when I knew that I had five patients that were already assigned to me that I needed to see. And there were more coming, a couple an hour that I needed to see. So that's not even the, the entire ER, but those were the ones that were assigned to me. You're just already behind and you're already frazzled and you don't even have time to use the restroom because there are six people who are waiting for you to uh, push them over to the CT scanner and get them food because nobody's even gotten them food before. Oh my gosh, it is the... I was so stressed. And granted, I was going through a little bit of personal struggles at the time, but I can also acknowledge, I think that was probably one of the most stressful environments, even if I had all of the most optimal scenario. I think just, oh my gosh, the beeping, the buzzing, the noise for 12 hours straight, uh, working seven, 60 to 80 hours a week. It was just, it was just a lot. Point number two, I left the ER. And this might be a reason that a lot of people like the ER, and that is the shift work. And a lot of people say it's a positive, but they don't tell you the flip side of the coin, which is that your shifts may be non-business hours. They could be night shifts. They could be holiday shifts. They could be weekend shifts. They could be shifts where another colleague had called out and you were on sick call and you were planning to go to a family function and you have to suddenly jump in and that happens. And the nice thing is that you can tidy up uh, any loose ends and you're off when you're off, you're off, unless you're on call to cover somebody. But I thought it was just gonna wear and tear on me to be working after hours and on weekends and stuff that that was just not for me. I took four years off before med school and I'm just tired. Med school was very tiring. Intern year was very tiring. And then to see myself looking at another 40 years of, of working weekends and nights, that was just not in the cards for me. Reason number three that I left the ER is that I never got to know anybody, a patient that is, and what happened to them. Unless they came back again, then you can catch up with them. But for the most part, you're there as a way to get them to the next place in their life, whether that's admitting them or discharging them. Nobody ever 
is wanting to stay in the ER. That's not their goal. That's not the administration's goal. That's not a physician's goal. Nobody wants to be in the ER. Nobody wants to be around you. Nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody wants to see you again. And they are there to get somewhere else. And as a result, you spend as little time as possible obtaining the pertinent information to the presenting problem, diagnosing, ruling out life-threatening issues, and getting them to the next place. And that's what you're there for. And a lot of it is wrangling with the inpatient doctors to get a particular patient who you think is very sick and needs to be admitted versus discharging a patient that you maybe feel should have been admitted and you're worried that you possibly missed something in the workup. Reason number four for leaving the R was making all sorts of contextual errors in the treatment to CYA. For example, sending a patient out without a wheelchair. That has actually happened at a hospital that I would leave unnamed. I probably spent a total of 15 minutes looking for a wheelchair and there were none around. Telling patients to follow up when you know they can't make it to an appointment, getting frustrated at them for not taking care of their own blood sugar when there's a million barriers in place for them to do that effectively. And the fifth and final reason why I left the ER was because I liked psychiatry a lot more. I liked the idea of owning my own practice rather than working for a large hospital system. I knew that I'd feel much more motivated to go to work when it's for myself rather than for a big corporation. I feel like psychiatry gets more to the heart of the matter, the underlying reasons behind many of their medical illnesses. Versus in the ER, your primary goal is to rule out any sort of life-threatening issue that could have been occurring. In psychiatry, you get to know patients more personally. You have longer sessions with your patients. They're in a more comfortable environment to open up to you. You can understand what sort of barriers lie in place for them to obtain treatment. You have time to fine tune medications rather than say it needs to be done by your primary care doctor. And looking at the bigger picture, it's just more conducive to my own long-term happiness and fulfillment in my career. So while psychiatry is certainly not the glitzy specialty to go into, it is very much under-recognized, under-appreciated specialty that I think a lot of people don't consider, but they should because they could actually be very happy in it for many reasons. When in medical school, there's always a little bit of shame or stigma against talking about the quote-unquote lifestyle of a particular specialty. The ideal scenario is one in which you judge a specialty purely on the medicine and the content of that specialty, such as the pathophysiology, etc. And if you talk about the lifestyle of a particular specialty, it's almost like exposing a chink in your armor because people think that you are not strong enough to manage in a particular specialty if you have to consider your own lifestyle. People also are made to feel that if you talk about the lifestyle, you're seen as a little bit lazy or not hardworking because you're not putting work first as a priority in your life. One thing that really stuck with me was when I was working a shift, I believe it was an evening shift. I remember it was after dinner and I was sitting next to my attending to my right. And I remember she got a phone call on her cell phone, which was very unusual for anyone to pick up their cell phone while on shift. And she had just received news that somebody in her family had passed. And I didn't know this attending very well at the time, so I didn't feel comfortable to stop and ask her about it and give her a hug. So I just pretended I didn't hear the conversation. And ultimately she started crying for a few minutes. While she was crying, other nurses and other people would continue to come up to her with the usual requests for signatures and questions, etc. And as soon as she realized that other people were noticing, she made a comment about having to pick herself up and keep going. I don't remember exactly if it was at that exact moment, but this clearly had a big impact on me. I remember during medical school, I missed my grandmother's funeral for a variety of reasons related to responsibilities in medical school and the way an exam fell during the week. After having had that experience where I missed my grandmother's funeral and seeing this individual as an attending also feel that she can't take a second a minute, an hour, a day for herself made me realize that emergency medicine is not the place that I want to work in long term. I understand that this is my own opinion and that other people for certain feel differently and I respect them and their decision. And I hope that for others, hearing my journey and my experience in the emergency room helps you in making a decision that you feel is most comfortable. Especially if you're a medical student, you feel that it is much harder to switch than somebody like a PA or an NP. But if you do feel that you have to switch, it is possible and have hope that you can feel happy and fulfilled in another specialty. I hope it's psychiatry, but I'm a little biased. If you do want to talk about psychiatry, please feel free to reach out.